Hi, my name is Mark Hogman and this is where I live. My heating is all with wood. I get my water out of the lake. I haul it up in buckets. I live in Lake Kippo, Quebec, Canada. I've been living here for five years. Well, it's winter time now. I don't, I don't have easy access to water, so I gotta cut a hole in the ice. First I score it, get the circle I want, and then I chop. And if, if I do right, it comes out in one big chunk like that, which makes a lot less mess. And then I usually carry 10 buckets up every, about every week or so. I usually carry two at a time. I'm just doing one here for movie magic. I got a cool idea. I can build up my cold tolerance in the water and I can have some really cool experience by going swimming in the, in the swimming hole, in the water hole. No, that's a bad idea. I don't like the idea at all. I, I, I think I made a mistake. First time in the lake this year. It's cold, but it, my body was more adjusted to it than I thought I would, but you still, your body gets into a little bit of panic because of the cold. And when you want to get out, you want to get out fast. But I'm still pleased and I can't wait to get in again and the weather was fantastic. No more buckets. Got the water pump out, took it out of the hibernation, primed it, and get it ready for the, turning it on because you can't, you can't pump it dry. Start it up, and then the, it sucks the air out and the water comes up to the pump. Then I put it in slow motion. I forgot to turn it off, so everything from now on is in slow motion, but still you see the happiness I have with the water. It connected the, in, the outlet to the tank. The tank filled up easily. I let it, let it overflow for Bath time in winter, I have two options. I can either go, be beside the fire with a big pot of wa boiling water, or I can go outside and make a bath outside. But I'm pretty used to making the bath and I can get the temperature exactly like I want it. But my favorite is outside. I, I, I put I put logs underneath the, the bathtub and I heat it up and I'm in there for about an hour. Bath time. I have a bathtub placed outside so I can take a deep, deep bath. The cedar leaves not only prevent me from burning my butt on the bottom, but they also clear up any skin conditions like rashes or scrapes or burns. I have a strange sense of humor. Lucky for me, I found others on TikTok that share that same sense of humor. Although this looks refreshing, it's actually pretty dangerous. Always be aware of what's downstream and you could be knocking your feet out on your ass very quickly. So be very careful. Hot tub ready on a cloudy day, but it's still good. So I can wash up and rinse off in the lake afterwards. Advice for chopping wood. Always remove shirt to reveal maximum Oompa Loompa sexiness. Wear eye protection. Wear steel-toed Solomons. I tap the log to judge the distance. Then the swing is all in the arc. Although I could get a wood splitter, I prefer to do it by hand. It's great exercise and, and coordination. And I actually love it. I look forward to weed, what knots and wood pieces of wood I'm going to try and find a way to get split. And it's always nice to have enough wood for warm nights in the winter. Since I live on an island, this is my, my major mode of transportation in the summer. It's just a hot to 15 on an aid and it gets me where I want to go. But when my son comes in, i got to bring him a boat because he usually comes in at night. Towing a boat across the lake. I got My son's coming in the middle of the night, got to bring a boat for him. So I go to a friend's to borrow a boat lift the motor of the boat so it doesn't create drag, tie a boat onto the bow, tie a boat onto the stern of my towboat, tow it across the lake, line it up with the dock. This is the first lobster mushroom. It, it's sign the summer's over because they usually come at the end of the, August or, or beginning of September. But they're, they're delicious and lots of them grow, but I got it growing right on my path. So, so free food, free food. Operation wasp nest removal. Got my gear, spatula, telescope full bucket. Place bucket underneath wasp nest. Get my Whoa. weapon. Destroy the wasp nest. Destroy the wasp nest. Run away, run away. All this yellow stuff here is actually pine pollen. I'm actually in the middle of a pine tree orgy. Red trillium. It's actually, the leaves are edible this time of year. And it tastes like tangy lettuce and a tiny hint of fox pea. Mm. Mm. Spruce tips are out. These are the little buds coming from spruce trees. They're actually edible and they're really good. Tangy, kind of citrusy. Going up the lake is always fun. And locals know where all the stumps and rocks are, even though they're not necessarily marked. But it's uh, 17 miles in. My off-grid day yesterday. So it was a beautiful day and I had a dinner that night so I took a bath and I shaved my head properly to get all rid of my extra hair. Canoeing the day before must have really tired me up because I had slept 12 hours that night and I woke up so there wasn't much time in the day to do anything. 
But I, I just pretty much wandered around without any clothes on, letting the sun bake my skin and move logs up, up and down, move, move wood here and there, and enjoyed the first loon. That was the first loon I got to see this, this, this spring. Please, Mr. Ice God, do not destroy my dock. I see the ice has shifted about 10 feet to the north. Just might lose my dock. Within two minutes, it was all over, but the entire lake was pushing up against my dock and pushed one crib into another, which opened up a crack of one kilometer wide to the Blueberry Island you see on the top right. What's that? The wind is certainly pushing that ice around, and the ice drives into the rocky points with huge amounts of force, and it piles up quite high, as you can see, but it's pretty awesome. The lake's going to go soon. I get a little excited and go out my canoe and test the ice every day. What I love about this time of year is that all the machines are useless this time. Yeah, motors don't mean anything, but a simple canoe and a paddle can get you anywhere you want to go. The ice opens up and you can navigate the cracks, get what you want, you can portage to get across islands where you need to get to go. We went to the mainland today to have a hot dog dinner at a friend's place on mainland, Norm and I and Lynn, and we, we made it across with paddle power. But it's absolutely gorgeous and there's no one around. The community is awesome. Part of me doesn't want the ice to go. Portaging to find open water. The irony is it's ice. I'm surrounded by ice on this side of the island and ice on the other side of the island. So I have to walk the whole island to find water. Every year something unique happens, and this year it's shrews. I keep getting shrews in my camp. Now, they're more related to a hedgehog than they are a mouse, and they have pointed teeth, but they eat their entire weight a day. So they have voracious appetites. But I, I can't seem to get rid of them. Every time I get rid of one, another one moves in. But they're, they're, they're partially blind, so they get around by smell, and they're up during the day. No, I live on an island, and I don't have an ATV, so once the ice is gone, then I switch to a boat, which I got right behind me. It's a, it's a Naden, put a 15 horsepower Honda on there, and I'm good to go. I got two problems. One is the ice is breaking underneath my skidoo, as you can see. And I gotta get my skidoo off these rocky ice over the water, which is now separated from the main lake, and bring the skidoo back to, to where I can get it on land. Unloading a load of wood onto the dock from the trailer of the snowmobile. So pretty much my day means touching wood, either moving woods, chopping wood, burning wood. But essentially I have to go get my wood so next year I don't make the same mistake of running out of wood like I did this year. The breakdown of ice. In the spring the ice breaks down, but it breaks down in something called candled ice or candleized ice. It breaks into these little shards and they're quite musical and they sound like little crystals. The entire lake will, will form little shards like this before it collapses in the spring. Snow wheeling on the lake in the spring. At this point, the snow is all melted. So you're on direct ice, about a foot and a half in ice, but it tends to melt just before the shore. So you got to speed up so you have enough speed to get over the water to get onto the land. Whirlpool of death caused by my water hole because the ice is shifting under huge wind forces. And so it's sucking water in and spewing water out. You get too close, you get sucked in. It's pretty damn cool though. It's the first time I've ever seen it. So the wind is shifting the ice. I have wood. I'm no longer rationing three pieces of wood in the morning, three pieces of wood at night. As for me, had some extra pine and spruce, and he donated it to the incompetent fund. So here I am bringing the, it was a good day to bring it over too, because the ice is firm and it's nice and cold. And I'm piling up the wood inside, so I'm good. Where I park my car is sacred to me, because that's where I learned how to carry a canoe behind the Cunningham's store. This used to be a local store when I was a kid, but they've sold and moved on. I had a little oopsie today. A tree I read wrong when I went to cut came back at me, did not go the direction I wanted. But luckily for me, I pulled the chainsaw out just in time so I didn't jam it. But it's a lesson learned. The lake and the ice are very firm because it was cold the night before, so I took advantage and split some birch and some yellow birch, which took a bit more effort. But I got it all halved and off the lake and on the dock so I don't have to worry about sinking in the snow. It warms up. Drip, drip, drip. Soon I won't have to hear that anymore. Not only did I shovel the roof yesterday, but I managed to go up there with an axe and get rid of all the ice buildup. One stuck by the gutter, which I'll have to wait for, but I'm almost drip free. Shirtless outside all day. Glorious spring day, 15 degrees. Sun was beaming. I, I, I moved logs, I shoveled the roofs, I, I shoveled my bath, and I, I didn't go in until the sun went down. No, I'm not just wearing a, a hoodie. I'm also wearing military long johns underneath. My son was in the military for five years and he scored me these. There's an upper and a t-shirt and that's it. They also got the military long johns on, on the pants as well. 
but it's about minus 10, but there's no wind, so it feels warm. And also it feels like spring. Bargaining with myself. Whenever I have a task to do, I always argue with myself. So I don't like carrying stuff up the hill, but I like chopping. So I always carry the stuff up the hill before you allow yourself to chop it, and then you're happy. Essentially, don't have a bite of steak until you've had a bite of cauliflower.